Time to check in on the tide. We got Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama right here. Check in on his show. It's a good watch, good listen. Monday, Wednesday, Friday right here on YouTube. In my own words, 630 Central. Got to get there. Stephen, we appreciate you stopping by. How are you? Doing good, man. Alabama right now in the second week of, of spring ball. Coach Saban got a lot of expectations for this team. He talked about that with ESPN's Heather Dinich on yesterday. Uh, trying to get back to that mentality of toughness, of domination, of being elite, uh, both on and off the field, both sides of the ball. And uh, I know he also brought up the intriguing quarterback competition between Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson. Both young men working extremely hard. But the question becomes, which one of these two truly pulls away and becomes the guy that the team trusts as that this is our quarterback right here? So, Stephen, you would expect, regardless of the performance of the, the two or three quarterbacks in play, that this carries on into August? It, 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 it very well could. I mean, right, right now, I mean, both of the guys, Simpson and Milrow, uh, neck and neck. I mean, uh, we, I know you can't base a lot of things on practice video that we've gotten from the, the university, but just looking at some of the clips that we have seen, uh, you do see improvement in Milrose footwork. You do see improvement in Milrose passing mechanics. It appears that he probably has been working with a private quarterback coach this offseason. And then with Ty Simpson, you definitely see the tight spiral. You definitely see him uh, putting the ball directly on the hands of these wide receivers. And on top of that, you're seeing Tommy Reese interact with all of these guys. He's in the huddles. He's uh, re requiring, demanding excellence from these guys. He's commanding respect you know, from all of the guys within this offense. Coach Saban mentioned he brought Tommy Reese in uh, not just as a play caller, but as a true quarterback developer because he has seen what Reese did at Notre Dame uh, with the likes of Brandon Wimbush when he was a quarterback coach, Reese for the Fighting Irish with Brandon Wimbush and Ian Book, Jack Cohn, and also here as of late, Drew Pine. So we've seen the development that Reese had at Notre Dame and coming into Alabama where you're going to probably have to lean even more so on your offensive line, your stable of running backs to kind of get this young quarterback room rolling and going, uh, you have to bring in a guy like Tommy Reese who can develop these guys and take them slowly uh, throughout this process. Hey, Stephen, back to the comments made by Saban uh, concerning expectations in the standard. Of course, the team failed to reach the college football playoff last year after a national championship game loss uh, to Georgia the year before. Uh, the most common a uh, term that seems to be attached to Saban, of course, is the process. And you would think after so many years and so much success that is unprecedented in our lifetime that uh, the process would be down pat. But has he given any indication to maybe maybe making some tweaks to the process? I mean, he, he has. And um, we know that at the early part of the Nick Saban era, the process was ground you out, right? The process was grit grind you out, wear you down with physical offensive line play, physical defensive play, running backs going downhill, quarterback just manage the game. And that got you national championships in 2009, 2011, and 2012. Well, 2015 comes in and you have Lane Kiffin and you see a change. You see more spread offense. You see quarterbacks having more of a say, quarterbacks being more electric. You see – Wide receivers that are running 4-3 speed. And the, the game was changing right in front of Saban, especially from the recruiting standpoint. So Saban had to make a tweak to the process in terms of, okay, let's see if we can keep the physicality, but let's also adjust and adapt with the times. That's why you saw Saban go with Lane Kiffin as an offensive coordinator, go with bringing in electrifying quarterbacks like your Jalen Hurts, like your Tua Tagovailoa's, like your Bryce Young's, bringing in – more innovative offensive guys like your Brian Dables, Lane Kiffin, Steve Sarkeesians, Mike Loxley. So he's had to make tweaks to the process. But I think the biggest thing that he wants to have back at is uh, the, the core value of uh, when you play Alabama, we want we, we the program wants that fear of you playing Alabama. And that's the thing that Saban wants to restore back in here because you're seeing more and more signs of we want Bama. You're seeing more teams no longer having that fear or respect factor for Alabama. They want to play Alabama now. 
And that wasn't the case early on in the Nick Saban process, the Nick Saban era. So I think more than anything, uh, that's what Saban wants to restore is the, is the mental focus, the mental edge, and that mindset of when you play Alabama, you know for a fact uh, by the time that game is over, you do not want to play that team in crimson and white ever again. So that, uh, that above all else is what Saban wants to have restored here because he looks over there east at Athens, Georgia, and the last two years, Kirby Smart has taken what he has learned from Nick Saban for nine seasons, 20, 2007 to 2015, and he has implemented that at Georgia, showing Coach Saban, hey, old school, make them quit. It still works. It still produces championships. So that's what Saban's trying to get back to, having that toughness of a mentality back restored. And I know that uh, Saban, for, in, in concerning his own personal role on the team, made some jokes early in camp about not knowing what to do because uh, being removed from the secondary, you know, he's just going to kind of wander around and t- try to look for something to do. I mean, he's made those jokes, but we, we all know Saban's going to have his hand in this defense in some way, shape, or form. Now, it's going to be interesting to see uh, Travaris Robinson uh, in his second year as the secondary coach for Alabama take on the entire secondary. And this is a guy that's a proven DB-type guy. Travaris Robinson played corner and safety at Auburn. Uh, he played. He, he spent a couple of years in the NFL. He has spent time as a coach with Auburn, with uh, – Miami with uh, South Carolina as a defensive coordinator. He's coached DBs and brought the best out of them wherever his stopping points have been at. And just this past season, what a job he did with Kool-Aid McKinstry. Kool-Aid, 15 pass breakups to lead the team. Did a great job with Terry on Arnold last season. Though Arnold played at a position by necessity. Arnold came in as a five-star safety in the 2021 class by the way of Tallahassee, Florida but he had to play corner due to a need. And still, Terry on Arnold put up with 45 tackles, still had an interception, still had eight pass breakups, made the all-SEC freshman team. So, Javaris Robinson will carry the entire weight in terms of being the secondary coach. But as Saban did mention, uh, Kevin Steele as the defensive coordinator, he will walk around, he will observe the secondary and how different guys are performing. Coach Saban, he'll walk around, he'll bark his orders, he'll you know, do what he does, moving around, jogging around from place to place. You know, at 71 years of age, making sure everybody is on their P's and Q's. So even though Saban likes to make jokes here and there, we all know that the overarching theme of this defense, it runs through him. So he's going to still have his checks and balances. 